on World News Now. Big invitations. NATO allies agree Ukraine's future is in NATO, but stop short of offering Kyiv an immediate invitation. Nationwide protests. Demonstrations displaying outrage over proposed judicial reforms erupt across Israel. On alert. Torrential downpours last South Korea leaving one killed and another missing. And the flower of dawn. Ice cream inspired by Thailand's famous temple attracts tourists from around the world. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and you are joining us on World News Tonight. And we start in Lithuania as the NATO leaders agree to offer Ukraine an invitation to join their military alliance. But with no details on the timeline to which Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky expressed his displeasure, asserting that his country will make the alliance stronger. NATO leaders in the Lithuanian capital on Tuesday offered an invitation to Ukraine to join the military alliance, but remained vague on further details, including any time frame. We reaffirmed that Ukraine will become a member of NATO and agreed to remove the requirement for a membership action plan. We also made clear that we will issue an invitation for Ukraine to join NATO when allies agree and conditions are met. In the communique on Tuesday, NATO did recognize the need to move faster, but would not be drawn on a timeline for when Ukraine would be invited to the alliance, as the leaders struggled to agree on when Ukraine might join, as well as other conditions of its membership. NATO members did, however, acknowledge that Ukraine's military was increasingly interoperable and more politically integrated with NATO forces, adding it would continue to support Ukraine's push for democracy and security. NATO's lack of clarity over offering Ukraine membership into the military alliance led President Vladimir Zelensky to criticize the latest statement. Taken to Twitter on Tuesday, the Ukrainian leader said that while the country values its allies, Ukraine also deserves respect, adding that it's unprecedented and absurd when a time frame is not set neither for the invitation nor for Ukraine's membership. Zelensky also slammed the delay, saying there seems to be no readiness to invite Ukraine, adding that a window of opportunity is being left to bargain Ukraine's membership in NATO in negotiations with Russia, meaning it will give Russia the motivation to continue its terror. Protests continue to rattle Israel as thousands of Israeli protesters took to the streets and blocked highways leading to Jerusalem, Haifa and Tel Aviv as part of the countrywide demonstrations against the government's planned judicial overhaul that has divided the nation. Israel woke up to more nationwide demonstrations on Tuesday morning as protesters kicked off their day of disruption and resistance. Major roads across the country have been blocked, like this one leading to Jerusalem, or like here, outside Tel Aviv. I came here because the, this government is demolishing totally democracy in Israel. In, this, in, in democracy, you have three institutions, government, parliament and judiciary. In Israel, there is only two, because the government and the parliament is the same. Demonstrators have also gathered at other key locations, including in front of the Supreme Court. Police have desperately been trying to quell the demonstrations by using water cannons to disperse protesters and by dragging others away by force. The unrest comes the morning after Parliament gave its approval to the first of three readings of a highly contested judicial reform bill, one which seeks to curb the Supreme Court's power. Netanyahu has said it will make governance more effective by restraining court intervention. But many remain unconvinced, saying it threatens democracy. Since the start of the year, tens of thousands have flocked to the streets every Saturday in protest. Now with the latest updates from Donald Trump's classified document trial. Trump has called for a lengthy delay before he goes to trial for allegedly hoarding military secrets at his Mar-a-Lago estate, contending that proceeding while he remains a candidate for president would make it virtually, virtually impossible to seat an impartial jury. 
Donald Trump has asked a federal court in Florida to postpone his criminal trial over his alleged illegal retention of classified documents. Prosecutors had already asked District Judge Eileen Cannon for a delay until December 11th from an initial date of August 14th so as to give both sides time to prepare. But attorneys representing the former president, who is once again seeking the White House, want the judge overseeing the case to indefinitely delay the trial, saying a December trial date would deny them reasonable time to prepare and described the government's requested schedule as, quote, unrealistic. The U.S. Justice Department did not immediately respond to a request for comment. My office will seek a speedy trial in this matter consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. When special counsel Jack Smith announced the 37-count indictment of Trump and an aide, Walt Nauda, last month, he said his office wanted to move quickly toward trial. Smith, who has a degree of independence from the Justice Department, was appointed by Attorney General Merrick Garland to oversee all federal criminal probes into the man who is currently the Republican presidential primary front-runner. I had every right to have these documents. Trump has pleaded not guilty in federal court to charges that he unlawfully kept classified national security documents when he left office in 2021 and lied to officials who sought to recover them. In this week's filing, Trump's lawyers said a December trial was untenable due to the scheduling demands of his presidential election bid, multiple other criminal and civil cases pending against him, and a potentially large amount of evidence they might need to review. The judge set a July 18th hearing over how classified information in the case will be handled. Over in South Korea, torrential rain swept the entire nation, claiming at least one life. The capital area is expected to experience a lull in the rain, while southern regions will see more downpours. One person has died after heavy downpours swept across South Korea on Tuesday. In Yeoju, Gyeonggi-do province, about 60 kilometers from Seoul, a man in his 70s who was walking along a river was killed after being swept away. Police and firefighters launched a search after his daughter reported that he had gone out to exercise and not returned. His body was found in the bushes near a river after a three-hour search. At the time, Yeoju was seeing up to 60 millimeters of rain per hour. In Busan, two women in their 60s were stranded at around 3.40 p.m., as the water level of a local river rose during the heavy downpour. Although one was rescued, the other is still missing and the police are still searching for her. Seoul also had heavy downpours on Tuesday, with Dongjakgu district getting more than 100 millimeters of rain in a single day. Emergency alerts were issued to several areas in Seoul, including the districts of Dongjakgu, Gurugu and Yeongdeungpogu. The Korea Meteorological Administration implemented a new measure on June 15th to directly send emergency alerts to regions experiencing intense downpours, which are classified as more than 50 millimeters of rain in one hour and 90 millimeters of rain in three hours. The heavy rain also disrupted the operation of subways in Seoul. Subways in the metropolitan region have to halt services when there is more than 65 millimeters of rain per hour. Trains on Line 1 were temporarily halted but resumed within 10 minutes. Trains on Line 4 were suspended for two hours. As of 11.30 p.m. on Tuesday, heavy rain warnings for Seoul and Gyeonggi-do province were all lifted. The KMA forecast today to be mostly cloudy with a lull in the rain in the Seoul metropolitan region. Southern parts of the nation, however, are expected to see heavy rainfall of 30 to 60 millimeters per hour accompanied by strong winds, thunder and lightning in the afternoon. The KMA has issued heavy warnings for the cities of Tongyeong and Gyeongje in Gyeongsangnam-do province as of 6.50 Wednesday morning. According to the Gyeongsangnam-do Fire Department, there has been a total of 15 cases of heavy rain-related damage such as damaged roads and flooded homes reported between 1 p.m. Tuesday and 9 a.m. Wednesday. Heavy rain across the nation is also being forecast until this weekend. A crisis at Britain's BBC over alleged payments by an unnamed star to a young person for explicit images deepened when its news division reported that the male presenter had sent abusive messages to a second person aged in their early 20s. The crisis at Britain's BBC deepens with more allegations against a top presenter. The unnamed star has already been accused of making payments to a young person for explicit images. 
On Tuesday, BBC News said it had been contacted by a second young person, aged in their early 20s and unconnected to the first, who said they had been approached by the presenter on a dating app. According to the BBC, when the person, who never met the presenter, hinted online that they would reveal his identity, they were sent abusive, expletive-filled messages. The new revelations come as Britain's leading broadcaster seeks to defend its handling of the growing scandal. Quite painful and difficult. The BBC's Director General, Tim Davey, said the broadcaster needed to review its complaint procedures. I think there's a valid question that I'm asking, which is how are complaints like this red flagged through the organisation and I want that immediately looked at and also review the overall process and protocols to make sure we're satisfied by them. The BBC has acknowledged that it only flagged the original complaint to senior management when the UK's Sun newspaper approached it about the story, some seven weeks after the allegation was first made. The report in The Sun, which has dominated Britain's national newspapers and television bulletins, said the presenter had paid a young person $45,000 for explicit photos over three years, beginning when the person was 17. The age of consent for sex in England is 16, but images of someone under 18 can be considered child pornography. Britain's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has described the allegations as, quote, very serious and concerning. We're going into a short commercial break now. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. Now on to North Korea's latest provocation, firing a long-range ballistic missile into the east. This comes as the regime has been sending warnings against the U.S. for its pipeline allegedly intruding the North's exclusive economic zone. North Korea conducted a missile test with its longest ever flight time on Wednesday. The missile flew for 74 minutes and just over 600 miles before falling into the sea, around 150 miles west of Japan's Hokkaido. That's according to Japan's chief cabinet secretary Hirokazu Matsuno, who strongly condemned the launch. North Korea's series of actions, including its repeated ballistic missile launches, threaten the peace and security of Japan's region and the international community and are absolutely unacceptable. Moreover, such ballistic missile launches violate relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions and are a serious security issue for our citizens. We've lodged a strong protest against North Korea through our embassy in Beijing. Hirokazu said Japan believes the rocket was an Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM. The North test-fired its first-ever solid-fuel ICBM in April. Analysts believe they can fly far enough to strike targets anywhere in the United States, and that the country has likely developed nuclear warheads that can fit on rockets. The launch follows heated complaints by the North in recent days, including accusing American spy planes of violating its airspace and comes ahead of an expected Wednesday meeting between leaders of South Korea and Japan at a NATO summit to discuss threats, including the nuclear-armed North. Semenya's historic ruling unlocks new territories for female athletes as the European Court of Human Rights announced that Caster Semenya, the South African Olympic champion runner, has won her appeal which she had submitted to the ECHR to end discriminatory test, uh, testosterone limits imposed on female athletes. Double Olympic champion Caster Semenya has won an appeal at the European Court of Human Rights in a case involving testosterone levels in female athletes. Let's take a look at what this ruling could mean for the world of sport. The South African athlete was the 2012 and 2016 Olympic champion in the 800 meters. She's been in a long-running battle to challenge rules that require female athletes with high natural testosterone to take drugs to lower it. When you're the best in the world, people get obsessed you know, with what you do. She has a medical condition known as hyperandrogenism. It's characterized by higher than usual levels of testosterone, a hormone that increases muscle mass, strength and hemoglobin, which affects endurance. 
In order to compete in women's events, athletes with differences in sexual development that result in high testosterone levels must lower them to those of, quote, a healthy woman with ovaries. They may take the contraceptive pill, have a monthly injection, or undergo surgery to remove testes. The Court of Arbitration for Sport ruled in 2019 that world athletics rules were necessary for fair female competition. Europe's top human rights court ruled in Semenya's favour on Tuesday, saying courts in Switzerland should give her a chance to fight the current requirements. She'd approached the European Court of Human Rights in February 2021 after losing appeals to sport's highest court and the Swiss Federal Tribunal. By a slender majority of four votes to three, the ECHR ruled that Semenya's original appeal against World Athletics regulations had not been properly heard. Seema Patel is an expert in gender discrimination in sport. It's a monumentous decision that's been made and it will really impact upon the dialogue going forward in terms of how we understand the interaction between human rights and sports regulation. Above all, I think what we need to remember is that there is an athlete behind this story and she was exposed to the world at such a young age and thrust into the spotlight, forced to undergo hormone treatment in order to compete in sports. So she sacrificed her career for this legal challenge. Semenya may now be free to challenge once again rules that have left her career on hold. World Athletics say it stands by the rules which remain in place for now. Semenya has said they're discriminatory and that contraceptive pills have made her feel constantly sick. World Athletics has consistently said the regulations are aimed at creating a level playing field for all athletes. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development has stated that major economies are on the cusp of an AI revolution that could trigger job losses in skilled professions such as law, medicine and finance. More than a quarter of the jobs held by workers living in the world's wealthiest countries could be taken over by increasingly human-like artificial intelligence. That's according to a new report out Tuesday from the OECD, or Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It conducted a survey of its 38 member states, which includes wealthy nations such as the U.S. and France, as well as emerging economies like Estonia and Mexico, and found that 27% of the labor force holds jobs that could be easily automated. The survey also found that workers fear they could lose their livelihoods to AI. The OECD said there is little evidence so far this is happening, but it may be because AI development is in its early stages. The survey was also carried out before the explosive emergence of generative AI like ChatGPT. The countries most exposed are in Eastern Europe, including Poland, the Czech and Slovak republics, and Hungary, where more than a third of jobs could be easily automated. Despite the anxiety over the advent of AI, two-thirds of workers already working with it said that automation had made their jobs less dangerous or tedious. The OECD said it's up to policymakers to help workers prepare for the changes and benefit from the opportunities AI will bring. History was made as a federal judge handed Microsoft a major victory by declining to block its looming $69 billion takeover of video game company Activ Activision Blizzard. Regulators sought to axe the deal, saying that it will hurt competition. The buyout of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft is now the biggest tech deal ever. It's been one of the biggest sagas in the video game industry. Don't get compromised. No, not the latest campaign in the Call of Duty series rather the purchase of its producer, Activision, by Xbox console maker, Microsoft. Bravo, stand by for contact. The $69 billion deal was finally given the green light by a US court on Tuesday. It would be one of the largest mergers in tech history. A district judge in San Francisco rejected arguments from the US government that the move would hurt consumers. The Federal Trade Commission claimed that giving Microsoft exclusive access to games, including the best-selling Call of Duty, meant rivals like PlayStation maker Sony and Nintendo could be left out in the cold. That argument was rejected. The FTC has until Friday to appeal. Shortly after the US decision, Britain's regulator suggested it could reconsider its opposition as well, the last major hurdle for a deal. 
The Competition and Markets Authority said it was prepared to consider Microsoft's proposals to resolve antitrust concerns in the UK, suggesting the two parties may come to a resolution. It all comes just weeks after the deal gained approval in the EU, China and South Korea. In a statement on Tuesday, Microsoft President Brad Smith said, quote, As we've demonstrated consistently throughout this process, we are committed to working creatively and collaboratively to address regulatory concerns. At stake is a huge and growing market. Video game sales are expected to jump 36% in the next four years to $361 billion, according to a PwC estimate. Much of the attention everywhere has been on the Call of Duty series of games. To address concerns, Microsoft has agreed to license the series to rivals, including a 10-year contract with Nintendo, contingent on the merger closing. After the news in the US and UK, Activision shares, listed in New York, jumped 10%. Welcome back to World News, and for more news, let's go to Around the World in a minute. The dash cam in Bulgarian village captured the moment when a meteor fell from the night sky, burning in a fireball of bright light as it descended. There were no reports of casualties or material damage. China successfully launched a new Korea rocket into space from Jaekwon Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. The Zook 2 Korea rocket blasted off and completed the flight mission according to the procedure. A wildfire consumed more than 4,000 hectares of the national park in eastern Bolivia, near the border with Brazil and Paraguay. Authorities said that the fire entered a wet national park area, lowering its intensity but making it difficult for the fire crews to fight the blaze. Severe landslides and flash floods triggered by torrential rain in the Indian northern state of Himachal Pradesh caused massive damage to public infrastructure, rendering tourists stranded in the region. Spanish Minister Cristera Rivera has gone viral on the internet. The minister was seen riding a bike on the climate summit held by the European Union. However, Rivera has drawn backlash as it was later revealed that she travelled via a jet for the climate conference. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you tonight as the sweltering heat gets sweat, uh, sweeter for Thailand. Ice cream in Thailand is now made replicating the famous Temple Dawn's uniquely shaped tiles. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.